Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This is Michael, K4EST. And we're going to look at this Power Supply Dave from Heath Kit. This is the IP28, IP-28, whatever you want to call it. It's a little wobbly there. It's got one foot on it that's kind of slid up. You can kind of see where it's supposed to be. In. And that's all it's missing. The rest of them there. And it's uh the third thing I noticed too is when I got this, picked this up, it doesn't have the bracket so that you can mount it up under a shelf or something or whatever. You know, these have a bracket that comes up here and across with the knob and you can set it up and adjust it. Um and mount it somewhere. But I probably won't would use that anyway. Sometimes I do. But uh so I'm not gonna worry about that. But this is just how I got it. You can see it. Um change that light a little bit see it's got something on here probably will come off I'm not sure yeah you can see it right there something on it and you can see too like right there's a little bit of a piece and come over here and you can see on the top of it here them little right in there See that? See it there where there was another, some kind of equipment sitting on top of it. And it's, it's got dust bunnies, it's got everything. Now, this is just the way I got it. This I just acquired this. And I wanted to have it on the bench just for a little quick. I've got other power supplies, but, you know, just... I was looking around and found this, and I thought this would be neat for doing a little testing or whatever. And it's neat that it's an old Heath kit. I can adjust my voltage. This goes to 30 volts. It's only good for up to an amp. But you get your meter here, and the bottom scale, if you got this set for 30 volts, if you put this on 10 volts over here, then it'll be 0 to 10 at the top of the scale there. You can see that. And you got, it also show your current if you flip this over. This is just a zero to one amp on the top here. If you got it set there, put that light like I want it there. And then if you go there, this will be zero to point one amp or a tenth of an amp there. So. Um, that's, I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's just a power supply, but I thought we'd go through this and restore. You got your on and off switch. These two lights here will show if I've got this set in current, this one will light up. Let me know the meter's reading current. If I flip the voltage, this one will light up. Let me know that I'm going to be reading voltage. Um, then you got your uh, outputs here with your ground. And then you've got your on off switch and you've got a standby and DC on switch, which is kind of neat. If everything's powered up and running in this thing. And so every time you turn on a linear power supply, it's a little bit hard on the capacitors and everything. Now, if you, especially if you've got a big one, like a 50 or 70 amp Astron or something, or even 35 amps. Um, you can hear those power supplies when you flip them on. You, you hear that boom, you know, uh, because them capacitors are like a dead short to the circuit until it fires up. So this here, all this does here is just turn off the uh, output. That's all it does. When you go to the standby, it just breaks connection going to the this right here, this red positive output terminal 
So when I flip it on, it's just giving it power. Everything's still powered up. So if you need to test something or you need to turn it off, move something around, flip it back on, check it, flip it off. You ain't actually flipping the power on and off, on and off, on and off. And it's a little bit easier on the capacitors and stuff inside the uh, circuit. A easier on the transistors too. Um, the back, there ain't gonna be nothing there, um, uh, much. Here's your pass transistor. This is, uh, a thing that sometimes I take these off, but then I might leave them for, you know, keep it original. This one I might actually take off, I don't have the thing for it anyway. But this here, let's say you can take and wrap your cord around and store this thing. Uh, and then we have our sensing. This one actually has sensing terminals so that if I'm, if I take this and hook a wire into here and say it's, I don't know, three foot wire or whatever, and I stick it on my circuit and start pulling some current, there's going to be a little bit of voltage drop in that wire. You know, it's just the way it is. This here is going to be reading whatever the voltage is right here before the voltage drop. Right inside here, the meter is reading. So if you got this set on 5 volts, it's going to show 5 volts. Or as you might on the other end of the wire, especially if it's a little skinny wire or something, it might actually drop down to 4.6 or whatever, 4.5. This will still be showing 5 volts. If you take your sense wires back here, or take hook wires to just sense and output, the way it's set up now is, this normal operation, just forget like this even exists with these jumpers across here. And it says here, uh, external programming and sensing note. A jumper, J, call them these J here, J, 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 must be across the terminals indicated for normal operation. Okay. So that's set up like that. And when it's set up like that, you can just forget this even exists and just use it like a bench supply or you know, don't have that. But having this here, is nice to take jumpers loose and come across and like here's your sense wires and take the and put that across the you know load also and it'll read the voltage right at your load so if it's dropped down to 4.6 it'll show 4.6 on the meter on the front up here and if you're saying well wait a minute you're still off you got a three foot wire going to that because you're getting over to wherever your thing is um, you gotta remember all the load, the current's gonna be drawn through these terminals here. These, uh, banana jacks here is gonna be pulling all the current through here. There's not gonna be any current drawn here. So essentially, you know, I mean, yeah, if you wanna get really, really, really technical, there's gonna be, you know, a thousandth of a volt drop or something in the wire or whatever. You know, nothing's perfect, but. This is going to show way closer to a true reading, you know, enough to worry about. Uh, but this will show true whatever the voltage is. It'll read back and show it on the meter so you can see if there's a voltage drop or anything like that. Most things when you're doing stuff just on your bench, you're, you know, messing around, doing something, experimenting with something, building something, you know. That's not that critical. You're not that worried about it. But there are some cases where you got to get something really critical like if you're doing something for say uh, some of these microcontrollers that need 3.3 volts and some of them are real sensitive um some of them will you know you can go like three volts to lower five volts and they're fine and some of them will even tell you when you get some of these microcontrollers or let's just well let's just say yeah like the microcontroller boards like a arduino or something or a teensy board or something like that where it's got the chip on it and the associated circuitry so you can experiment with it. You know, it's got your GPIO pins coming out of it. Like a Raspberry Pi maybe or something like that. You know, where you can do experiment and then you get, you know, what you want. You can actually, you know, don't have to actually use the Teensy board or Raspberry Pi. You can actually take the chip and whatever and, you know, roll your own if you want to once you get it working with that. Or you can just use that in your circuit. And hey, most people do. You know, most people, if you've got, you know, you're just a 
at home, you're not doing this for, for professional, you know, factory or something like that or whatever. You build a little thing, automatic fish feeder or whatever and stuff, you're just going to leave the Raspberry Pi in there. You're going to leave the Arduino board hooked up all the time. You know, that's just going to be, once you get done development and getting the code like you want it to run like you want to do, you're just going to leave it in there and that's going to be, you know, that's it. Some of them, though, like I say, need, they're real picky on some of them's like the Teensy 3.5. It's a 3.3 volt, but it's tolerant to 5 volt or a little over 5 volt. The uh, 3.6 Tensy though is real strict on the 3.3, uh, yeah, 3.3 volts. Some of these TFT displays are really picky that I've come across. I mean, you go there, say 3.3 volts, and you get up to 3.5, you can zap those things. Um, you'd think it'd be more like 3.8 or 4 volts or so before it starts stressing something out. But man, I'm tell you, there's some of them are really picky. So if you're getting something like that, you can use the sensing on the back. Hook it up, check it out. I guess I've bored you enough with that. But anyway, so let's take this apart as usual and see what's in it just the way I got it. And I get these screws out. We'll uh, have a look in it. Let's take it off. Well, we're on this angle, let's, let's power supply. Okay, and I can tell you right now, I've got a something can't put on video. But there's a smell of burnt electronics, and I can see probably why. Let's just bring it around this side here. Oh, well, that's interesting. We'll get to that in just a second. <laughs> Something else very, very interesting. You never know when you take things apart. As you can see here, let me the line a little bit here. These paper capacitors here. These filter capacitors. Um, that's probably why. These things dry out real quick. And... I think this thing come out around uh, 70, 69, 70, something like that. So, yeah, it's uh, 50 years old. And even before that, like 30 years or something, 25 years, these things will dry out enough to short out. Instead of going open, these will short. And it's hard on what's inside here. And, uh so we'll see it may not even be may not even be working but yeah that's uh that's these definitely got to go there and let's see if you can spot the other <laughs> let's bring this light around here oh a couple things i see there's uh that capacitor that where I can see you see that and that capacitor and that capacitor has definitely got to go there's one two three four five capacitors got to go but have you spotted the weird thing yet what 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 is this for <laughs> now that's really odd it makes me want to find a player and play this I gotta get see if I can get that out of there it's it's actually wedged in there it's not so it was put in there for a reason. That's really odd. That is really odd. All the screws are in there. Everything's secure. There's no reason to... I just don't want to come out easy either. It's like it was put in there. And then they put this fuse holder in. Wow, that's really strange. Really, really strange. I have to get that out, and I don't know if I even got anything to play those anymore. It could be the secret something that you stick it in and play it, and some guy from the 1980s or something stuck that in there. And said, if you find this tape, if you're the lucky one to find this tape, please do such and such and such and such, and you uh, 
get my million dollars that I've got stored or something. Who knows? But that's just strange. I can't figure out why it's... I'll go through it more and see if I can see if there's any rhyme or reason why that was stuck in there to insulate something or whatever. But it just doesn't make a bit of sense why that would be there. I've seen people rig up stuff like this before. Piece of old piece of something, just stick something in to keep something from touching something or whatever. But I don't understand that one. Um, these resistors. Let me uh, move the camera a little bit here. See it a little differently here. All these resistors. At first, they look like Alan Bradley style, but these are roundies, I do believe. Yes. Uh, every one of them's roundies in this thing. So those will definitely have to be checked, especially with these in there, because if these went shorted, could have pulled a lot of current and heated them up and cause them to change resistance. So we'll definitely have to check all these and. I check all the active devices in here, but uh, that's the inside of it there, and so you see it there. So anyway, there's that, and I think before I end this video, as I'll uh, get this all cleaned up and restored and. I'll make a two-part video on this one just to make it easier but I think I'm going to do something I tell everybody to do I don't recommend doing this I wouldn't do this if I were you I would replace all these caps first um, at least before you even attempt this but I'm gonna plug this up and turn it on very cautiously and check the output and I have a sus suspicion that we'll have output voltage but it'll be low voltage like the minimum and I won't be able to bring it up or down is my suspicion just because of these paper caps when they when these paper caps short out um, and start leaking real bad internally they, uh, you know, don't leak no gooey stuff out. They leak electrically inside. They start turning into resistors and start drawing current. They usually pull down these transistors here and cause it not to, I won't be able to change the voltage. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Let's do that. Yep, there's no smoke or no popping yet. Alright. I get that. It shows about a volt and a half, and I can't adjust it on the 10 volt side. I got a 30 volt side, which is down here. We're reading about a volt. And I can't adjust it. Now, of course, that meter circuitry or something could be gone goofy, but let's check it out and see. Just to see. Um, let's see here. I was going to try to put that in shot, but maybe I can do that. Maybe I can do that. It's a little crooked, but you can see it. Okay, 1.75. I hope you can see that okay. It might be a little bit too angled. This is 1.75. Yeah. No matter what I put on the current, make sure it's run all the way up. This current potentiometer is another one of them like 10 to 1 turn ratio that you can really find just it but the voltage is not that's just a regular linear potentiometer As you can see there's nothing happening let's go to the 10 volt scale 1.3 volts 
and that's about normal. That's like that's about as low as you can go. Um, even like if you're using the LM317, which this does not, but yeah, there's no adjustment there. All right, so let's, you put that to standby, it goes to zero, even though everything's still on. It turned off right there. Okay, so that answers that. Let me unplug this thing. All right, so yeah, definitely gotta get those changed out and check the resistors and I uh, really gotta check those uh, transistors too because they shorted out. And that puts a heavy load across. Um, especially it's kind of hard to see down in there but uh, those resistors down there and then a couple of those transistors so anyway get that checked out and get that done and get it restored and well uh, in the next video part two we'll go over it and tell you what I found and what I've done to get it going and all that so anyway thanks for watching don't forget to reach down and hit that like button if you uh, like this video and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And until the next video, this is Michael, KE4EST, 73.